How does knowing 10 similar science classes impact on how we design or illustrate? Well, they say knowledge is power. So knowing how semantic sign classes power or how you visually communicate must be beneficial, yes? To enhance the effectiveness of visual communicating to people is a holy grail. Semiosis helps your questing by semiotically framing meaning to peak audience engagement. Keep watching to see how. Welcome to episode 17, season three of Semiosis 101 where we explain Charles Sanders Peirce's semiotic theory of semiosis, sign action, in design-essential terms. If you've watched Semiosis 101 episodes before, then you will already know I am Dave Wood. I use Semiosis 101 on YouTube, Patreon and Substack to provide a design-essential translation of Charles Sanders Peirce's semiotic theory of semiosis, sign action. Why do you need Semiosis 101? Peirce's writing and terminology is very obtuse. On Semiosis 101, I translate Pierce's brilliant theory into language creators will understand and can follow. After all, we study design and illustration and not philosophy, so we need theory censored to creators' needs. Yes, that is why you need Semiosis 101. Season 3's semiotic theme is semiotic encoding, with a focus on how audiences make interpretations. What this season's theme means to you as visual communicators is that at long last, you will see what semiotic signs can be or will be. We will build your confidence to encode semiotic sign action into your own designs or illustrations during your own ideation phase to enhance visual communication. We have now reached a point in season three where we can now have a deeper understanding of the powering of semiotic sign action. So far, I have translated Pierce's obtuse terminology into more design essential terms. This episode completes five Semiosis 101 episodes on Pierce's 10 sign classes, which began as far back as season one. Now we are at the point of understanding to explore how to use the sign classes to frame meaning for different purposes. Hit subscribe to this YouTube channel and I will explain. Last episode, we explored the idea of a sign vehicle, a delivery method for the representation. I've described Pierce's three levels of power in a sign class as comprising of perceiving communication, representation, and delivery. Each of the 10 sign classes weave these three levels together in different assemblages of power, ranging from simple to complex. This is the crucial lens for creators to approach the application of this knowledge. So far, I avoided Pierce's obtuse terminology, but I will quickly reference it here to then jump into design-centric terms. I will then be able to discuss how 10 classes can help to semiotically encode meaning. Perception of communication power. Rheumatic, dissonant arguments. Possible, suggested, resolved. Representation power. Iconic, indexical, symbolic. Familiar, existent, proxy. Delivery power. Quality sign, sin sign, legacy sign. Instant, mediated, agreed. As I caveated last episode, my design essential terms are still evolving as analogues to pierces. What I want to focus on now is your visual communication intent and then look at how the 10 classes will help you. We will do this through three lenses of perception, representation, or delivery. Once we do that, you will see the opportunities of the 10 sign classes. Don't worry, this is not a memory test. There will not be an exam. This is about gaining knowledge to develop your own semiotic frame of mind. Teaser alert to season four. When visually communicating something to someone, the sign classes are adaptable to your needs. Let me quickly give you an example. Your client wants you to provide a design or illustration outcome so their audience can buy baked beans. Remember, much of Pierce's theory of semiosis is predicated on threes, triads. So the semiotic perception, representation, and delivery of the visual communication have three degrees of intensity each. This means semiotically that there are nine variables on communicational intensity available to the creative, depending on what you need to visually communicate. 10 sign classes providing nine levels of communicational intensity. Let us get a quick overview of what these intensity levels are using our overtly consumerist example of buy more beans. 
I will group the intensity variables under the lenses of perception first, then representation and delivery. To make this relevant to creators, I will frame each variable under a creative intent too. In other words, what the client wants, then why the audience will be who, and only then how it works semiotically. Okay, beginning with perception, we will start with the low semiotic intensity of a possibility of perceiving. Pierce's Reem. Sign classes 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 8 start from this visual possibility. The client needs to sell tins of beans. But does the audience know what a big bean looks like or a tin can? A red ovaloid shape possibly shares a quality of a big bean. A grey tube possibly has a look of a tin can. The audience at this stage has had their attention hooked by just perceiving possible shapes. The visual qualities of beans or tin can can now build further meaning in the audience. We now increase the semiotic intensity to visually suggest what to perceive. Versus die sets. Sign classes 4, 7 and 9 start by suggesting X could be actually Z. This middle semiotic intensity level visually suggests more to perceive. The client needs to seduce audience desire with visually suggested beanie deliciousness. People need to eat. Beans need selling. People want to buy quality. By crafting the beans visual language, the audience can become more certain that the visuals suggest delicious beans. Finally, at a higher semiotic intensity perception level, Pierce's argument, only sign class 10 works at this resolved perception level. The client needs the audience to only buy beans from them. They are in business of. They want to lead the market. The client's branding resolves an unspoken agreement that a particular visual language used can only mean that client's beans. This relies on the audience to socially and semiotically resolve that the visuals can only represent this brand's beans. Now moving on to representation, we will once more begin with its lower semiotic intensity utilizing visual familiarity. Pierce's iconic representation. Sign classes 1, 2 and 5 utilize familiarity to begin the semiotic representation of the concept. The client needs the audience customer to know the sealed tin contains beans. The opaque nature of the tin means that its label indicates what is inside. The typography can say beans, but the eye needs seducing rather than telling. Qualities of familiarity are utilized and nested in many ways to build not just meaning, but also desire to eat what is inside. Iconic elements such as succulent use of reds, multiple beans with glossy highlights suggest home cooked deliciousness. We will now increase the semiotic intensity to move from familiar possibilities to representing existing things. This level utilizes the familiar to interpret existing things, Pierce's indexical representation. Sign classes 3, 4, 6, and 7 represent existing things, whether these are real or imaginative things. The client wants customers to cook and eat their beans at home. Label images often employ the suggestion of just cooked servings on toasted bread or on plates. Together with the nested iconic images, these images represent existing things that can be found in any home. Finally, at a higher semiotic intensity representation level, Pierce's symbolic representation, there's a social cultural agreement that X is proxy for Z in this visual context. Sign classes 8, 9 and 10 utilize the power of visual meaning bearing as an agreed proxy for something else. So how can one image semiotically be a proxy for something else? Let us quickly explore representation as a proxy for something else. The client needs the customer to repeat by only their beans, so they need to quickly identify the brand on a shelf. When in a social cultural way, certain colors, iconic, and images, iconic and indexical, are semiotically perceived as a proxy for a product, then brands can build complex meaning from simple visual building blocks. The last set of semiotic intensity levels focus on how the semiotic sign delivers its meaning. The low intensity level of semiotic delivery of meaning is instant, Pierce's quality sign. 
Sign class one is the only class that relies on an instant delivery that this quality suggests set. The client needs the customer to know there are beans in the tin to sell beans. So as a semiotic instant delivery of meaning, how can this happen? The visual iconic representations on the label instantly suggest beans on an immediate interpretive level. The middle intensity level of semiotic delivery of meaning is mediated versus synthesized. Sign classes two, three, and four rely on a mediated delivery that in this context, X proposes Z. The client wants their tin beans to stand out from the competitors and be perceived as delicious. The semiotic sign action between the label's visual elements work together to mediate a proposal that these tin beans are the best. The highest intensity level for semiotic delivery of meaning is agreement versus legisign. Sign classes 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 rely on an agreement that delivery as X it means Z. But an agreement? The client's brand wants to be the market leader in tin beans, so the customer buys more. The audience who shop for beans agree that when the client's brand is recognised, it means quality beans. Semiosis helps to structure that branding. In design centric terms, we can explain Pierce's 10 sign classes in easier to understand terms. Sign 1, possible familiar instance. Sign 2, possible familiar mediators. Sign 3, possible existence mediators. Sign 4, suggested existence mediators. Sign 5, possible familiar agreed. Sign 6, possible existence agreed. Sign 7, suggested existence agreed. Sign 8, possible proxy agreed. Sign 9, suggested proxy agreed. And sign 10, resolved proxy agreed. But so what? I hear you cry. Come back for the next two episodes to see how these sign classes work in actual design and illustration examples. See you all again next week for more Semiosis 101 to help illustrators and designers to enhance your visual communication skills.